Praise God. This is Apostle Deanna Dixon. I pray that you are having a blessed day in the Lord. Come on, somebody, give him glory, give him honor. And before I even start this um this live, I want to encourage everyone, especially those that are doing the things that God have told you to do, showed you what to do. It is not easy. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. If you know anything about truly living this life that we call Christian life, it's not uh, an attainment spirit. It's not uh, a show off spirit. This stuff is real, meaning that you have to pray for real. You have to fast for real. You have to forgive for real. You have to be for real. Okay. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I'm on one early this morning, been on one all week, truth be told. So I want to talk about something. So let me go ahead. Y'all already see my title. Y'all better stop playing with God. And and hold on. I've been seeing this. Let me tell you something. I've been ordained since I was 27 years old. I'm talking about like in a real church in case people, you know, I think some people think I just came off of Facebook. Or I'm on Facebook, dude, whatever. I've been in church most of my life, but like I said, I got removed from God in 2015, but I can roll with anybody. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Not trying to exhort myself, but trying to tell you I carry this. I, I know what I work with. I know who God is. And I'm saying for since I was 27. And I'm 51 now. I've seen so many of you just lie, play games with with yourself, with with God. And I, I'm I'm I, let me read this scripture before I get into this thing. Cause no, you're not gonna like me today. I'm gonna tell you right now. And and some of you, I'm talking to you. That's that's on here or going to be on here. And you can get mad if you want to. Go to God. Uh, Matthew 7, 21, King James Bible. Not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my father, which is in heaven. Come on, somebody. Let me read verse 22. It says, Matthew 7, 22. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name and in thy name have cast out devils and in thy name done one many wonderful wonderful works excuse me all right so i'm gonna start off with a situation that happened in california a long time ago um maybe about seven years ago um i was at i went to to see jesse duplantis now most of you know who he is most of you don't google him whatever the case may be he's a um preacher out of new orleans and you know he has this little thing to where a lot of blacks like him y'all know what i'm saying so he kind of like is comical with his preaching and i always honestly kind of liked him so a person um that i was um friends with wanted to go ahead and see them and, and i my spirit was like i don't i'm not feeling this but when you like people sometimes i think it's not that you yeah you do override your spirit let me keep this thing a hundred so i overread my spirit and i said i'm gonna go and I understood why God allowed it, though. So when we got in there, and, and I saw this with my own eyes, so I really don't care what nobody say. So you can make your little comments. You can do a video if you want. I really don't care. So um, he's preaching. And in the middle of his preaching, he says, he puts up his hands and he says, New World Order. And everybody just kept on looking like that was normal. So I, I ain't going to lie to you. It was like a movie to me. I looked around because right then they got my attention. Not because I'm like, okay, wait a minute. Did this man stop preaching and in the middle of his preaching, put his hands up and say new world order as if we're supposed to be down with the new world order. Listen to what I'm saying. I was so disturbed. So the guy next to me, I tapped him. I said, um, you didn't hear what? Well, that's probably part of it. I said, they ain't part of no doggone sermon. I'm lit about this time. And I'm making a little noise just to be honest with you. I'm like, man, I'm finna get up out of here. I say, because this some witchcraft stuff going on. This man preaching all of a sudden. He put up his arms and say, new world order. And y'all sitting up here, staying up in here like everything cool. What am I saying? I'm t I I've, been de I've been serving God since 27 years old. I have to be honest. I didn't get serious till I was 40 something. But now I understand everything. There are 90% of people that play with God. That's why he says many are called and few is chosen. I'm going here and you're not going to like me. I have seen people lie on God. I've seen people lie in God's name. I've seen people lie just to lie. I've seen people pimp God's word. I've seen people take control of money and let money take control of them teaching God's word. I see it on Facebook all, every day, every time. Y'all not ready for me today. Let me tell you something. You a bad something. 
Because I'm going to be honest with you. I truly believe this, what I'm getting ready to say about myself. When I was younger, I, I, feel, I really feel I had demonic spirits on me because the stuff I did, I can't believe I'm alive. I'm not playing. I was that person. I will pull your card. I, I was with people that will pull your card. Oh, y'all ain't ready for me. Y'all ain't ready for me. And I'm saying this because I'm going somewhere with this story. But when I got saved, I don't operate the way I used to. I don't lie. I don't steal. I don't try to kill. I don't do any of that. And, and I want I want y'all to really listen to me today. Because you cannot preach that word, live that word, and, and do opposite. Because I'm telling you. You see, I don't think people understand who God is. Have you truly read that Bible? God have allowed his own people to die. We're talking about people that loved God. You need to look at the story of the man of God in the Bible. You need to look at Samson. Even though Samson was still a man of God, and even in the end, he repented. But look what God allowed to happen to him. I'm saying something today. You people, some of you are playing with, with God. You don't know what you're doing. You rather play with somebody else, another human, than to play with God. Y'all better stop playing with God for money. For funny and for honey. What am I saying? Some of you having sex in the pulpit. Some of you having fornication. Some of you are committing adultery. Some of you are. And then you get up, got the nerve and audacity to get up on that pulpit and preach Sunday morning. Knowing what you then did Saturday night or even Sunday morning. Do you not understand that this altar that we call the altar of God is death to a, a, a sinner? Do you not understand? Hold on. Oh, Lord. I'm, I got to preach this. Now. I got to slow it down. When we talk about the tabernacle, we talk about the brazen altar. Do you know why they had the brazen altar? Because everything has to be purified. Do you remember in the Old Testament how they had to, they had to slaughter a goat or uh, uh, whatever the offering was? Well, a lot of people are saying that the Old Testament is not relevant. Yes, it is. The old cannot be without the new and the new cannot be without the old. What am I saying? Everything you do comes back to you. It's called a harvest and reaping, sowing and reaping. And some of you are forgetting that God is real. And I'm going to tell you what God said to me. He said, Deanna, the reason why they don't believe because I haven't punished them in the way that I used to. Understand what I just said. It's coming a time where, uh, and you're not going to understand this unless you're really spiritual. And what I mean, have a relationship with God. Sometimes grace and mercy runs out, meaning that God allows things to happen to you because guess what? He's going to get your attention. Some of you are wondering why this is happening, why that is happening. Have you considered what you've been doing? Have you considered who you did it to? Have you considered what you've said, what you didn't say? Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I'm going somewhere. You cannot play with God. This is real. You know, the old people used to say it. As a matter of fact, let me tell you how I really got serious with God. I remember I, my grandfather, he's dead and gone, but he had told me, Alfred Brandon Sr., he told me, he said, I told him I got saved, right? And I was so excited. And Papa shot me down in, in just in that excitement. I said, Papa, I got saved. He said, baby, don't play with God. And the way he said it pierced my spirit. I got sad. I said, what you, why you say it like that? He said, because a lot of people don't understand who God is. And I didn't understand it when he said it like that, but I do today. You guys, God is not to be played. God is holy. The way you talk to your mama, your sister, your brother, your neighbor, cuss people out, talk about people, you can't do that with God. You cannot do that with God. Because I promise you, God will allow you to get on your back and he, I'm telling you, it's true. I mean, oh, God is love. Yes, God is love. But God is a God of wrath. You ain't read that whole Bible, apparently. As a matter of fact, you haven't read Deuteronomy, where blessings are cursings. Choose this day what you will have. Isn't that true? You can say what you want. You notice if you choose wrong, bad things happen to you back to back to back, which I rebuke because I ain't speaking that into nobody's life. But you notice if you choose blessings, how they come and, and not just in a monetary form. What am I saying? I know people and I got to go here. Lord have mercy. And I know they're going to listen and I know they're going to feel some kind of way, but I really don't care at this point. I'm I'm about souls. I, I don't care. I'm, I'm not about a popularity contest in case y'all haven't noticed. I don't care who like me. I don't care who don't like me. I don't care who talk about me. You, you can't move me. He's been training me for this my whole life. So I really don't care. I'm not saying that I don't have compassion, but I don't care what people believe. I believe in the truth. Come on, somebody. And the truth is, I know people personally, y'all playing with something that that you shouldn't be playing with. I have done a lot of things in my life that I regret. I have to be honest. But one thing I've never done. I've never taken lightly. Is to play with God in any shape, form or fashion. Or his people. 
Even people that I don't really particularly care for. Yeah, I'm saying it because y'all need to hear truth. We are called to love each other, but we're never called to be around each other 24-7. I ain't got to kick it with you, but I'm not supposed to hate you. I'm not supposed to lie on you. I'm not supposed to plot on you. I'm not supposed to plan on you. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. It's too many politics in the pulpit. It's too much stuff, too much Christian witchcraft in the churches, manipulation, spiritual abuse, hatred. Some of the most meanest people I know are Christians. Are you seriously? Because that's not the spirit of God. You get angry and then you plot and you plan and you get people back and then you're wrong for that because here's the deal. Vengeance is mine, said the Lord. So anytime you put yourself to try to get somebody back, you already know you out of order. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I'm telling y'all, God keeps telling me to say it. And I look like I say this every year, the same thing. Stop playing with God. Stop playing with God's people. If somebody do you something, this is the protocol of God and in the natural. You're supposed to pray about that thing. I know you got to vent sometime, but you ain't supposed to be calling everybody. Y'all get on Facebook. Y'all throw shade. Y'all throw hate. Y'all throw anger. You're supposed to take that thing to God and let God act accordingly. Because I'm going to tell you right now, there's nobody that get away with nothing. Or oh, it may not come... Um, right. Well, I don't know. Cause you know, lately it's coming around um, quick. You remember back in the day, things used to take a long time. It's not taking like that anymore. It seems like what you do come back to you quicker these days. Be mindful of the way you talk to people. Be mindful of the way you treat people. I'm telling you. And then hold on. I'm about to hit you for real. Then some of y'all wondering why your children going through or something happened. Think about them seeds because guess what? They're all connected. Oh, you thought that you can just do what you want and it don't affect nobody in your family. Y'all don't understand generational curses or generational blessings. Y'all better understand. I, I think it's time for the pastors, preachers, and teachers to really start teaching people the Bible, biblical applications, and not just preaching a good word. Tell them the word so they can know how to apply it in their lives. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. Because I'm going to be honest with you, we have a jellyback nation and a jellyback church to where, you know, if somebody say two, two cents to you, you're getting upset. But have you ever wondered why they say that, why they did that? Because I'm going to tell y'all something, every lie ain't always a lie. Oh, y'all ain't ready for me. Sometimes the truth is mixed up with a lie. And only have your wisdom and discernment, you can actually... um you know, kind of like rule out what's real and what's fake. And I'm just telling you, y'all need to stop playing. And then just to be real with you, y'all don't see what them people doing. Now, everybody's talking about Trump. Let me tell y'all something. Y'all notice I don't talk about um, politics and stuff. The elite is with the elite. So you can't tell me nothing about, oh, they finna do. They, this is all a planned propaganda. This is everything that they need to conduct martial law and gun control. And when it drops, can I tell y'all something? That's when everybody going to want to pray. Remember when so-called 9-11, notice I said so-called because that didn't really happen. But hey, and everybody that, that they refuted it or is dead. Y'all know that, right? Everybody that say they heard a bomb in the building and everything. You know, all them people just mysteriously died. Y'all acting like y'all don't know what time it is, but y'all going to know in a minute. Or y'all going to know in a hot minute, too. Because one thing I've learned about people, they don't believe until it happens. Oh, y'all ain't ready for me. It's real. These people just concocting everything. And I say this to say when 9-11 so-called happened, everybody, oh, let's pray, let's pray, let's pray. Every time something happened, y'all want to pray. Even in our own lives, want to pray. You better pray before this stuff come. Y'all sitting up there bickering with each other, trying to get houses, cars, and all that stuff. When Do you know when martial law come, you ain't going to own nothing? Oh, y'all don't know that, huh? No people, yes, they coming in and you ain't going to own nothing. Y'all don't get mad if you want. People did get mad at me. Don't say that. Whatever. <laughs> I'm trying to tell y'all what's getting ready to happen. Communists is coming to this country, whether you like it or not. These people have been planning this since 1800s. So you can't stop it. Nobody can. And God is going to allow it because America have, have become Babylon before God. Oh, y'all don't like me today. I don't care. And y'all playing with God. Don't you know that God is what you're going to need when this stuff happens? The only person that can tell you where to go, who to trust, what to do, how to survive mentally, physically, and spiritually, emotionally. Oh, y'all ain't ready for me. Let me tell you something. I keep seeing so much death. Y'all know how the Holocaust is going to be another Holocaust, but this time of all nations. Are y'all prepared? I'm going to tell you right now. God said the church ain't even prepared. Y'all too busy running after blessings and prosperity and hating on each other for real. And I hate that word hating. 
But what I'm saying is like so much anger. You can't even talk to your brother and sister these days. Y'all will talk about each other, but y'all won't talk to each other. Oh, man, all I'm saying is count the calls and stop playing with God. Point blank in the story. Stop playing. Stop playing. <laughs> all right, God bless you. God keep you. And um, learn to talk to each other. But first of all, talk to God. Because y'all get so emotional and then y'all get on Facebook and y'all y'all tell people. Let me tell y'all, maybe this might help you out. And I used to do the same thing, so I understand, okay? That's that's when you're a baby in Christ or you're just immature or you just don't care. But I started talking to God first. Therefore, by the time I come to you or anybody else, I'm a little calm. Then I can think straight. I can, I can look at both sides because I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to tell you what God told me. This might help you out. God said there's three sides to a story. <laughs> Your side, their side, and his truth. <laughs> y'all ain't ready for me. And when God told me that, I was mad. I was like, what you mean, God? You know what he means. It ain't always like it seems. Sometimes we both, of, both of us are wrong. Y'all ain't ready. All right, God bless you, God keep you. This is Apostle Deanna Dixon, Roll Our Soldiers, for that is who we are. God bless.